convey with Mr. Carter this morning. Oh, uh, good morning, sir. Reverend, good morning to you, sir. I trust that you and the family are well? Yes, sir, we're doing fine. Walk with me. We, uh, we've had quite a rough winter. We've had a lot of uh, sickness in the family, but as of today, a bright, sunshiny day, everybody is doing well. Well, the dear Lord has blessed us with a beautiful one indeed. Yes, he has. And what brings you here today, sir? A matter of most compelling nature, I must share with you. It has come to my attention by way of the latest issue of the Gazette that the state legislature has passed a, a law thereby allowing individual uh, landowners such as yourself to free their slaves. For years, this has not been, a, been allowed, but uh, in their wisdom, uh, they believe that the time has, has come to allow people in positions such as yours to free their slaves. Mm -hmm. I have been thinking about this, Reverend, and I need your guidance. What do you think, what does the Bible say, what is the right thing to do? That's what I want you to know. Well, my counsel to you as, as your minister and as a man of the cloth, no man should own another man. Uh, th this has been through the ages to, to ancient times where there's, there's been slavery, uh, and we, we're still fighting with it today, but truthfully, I, I realize other factors are at play, but for the human spirit, no man should own another man. Thank you for that. I have read that, and I have prayed about that, and I have dealt with that over and over. And I'm glad to hear it coming from you, Reverend. I respect your opinion on this. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome, sir. I'd, I'd be happy to cover more details with you. It, it, it's possible to be done by, by will. Uh, if you prefer to do it that way, uh, you could prepare a document. Uh, you could uh, prepare a deed of gift, okay. um, and there are witnesses required, and uh, once executed in front of the clerk uh, at, at the courthouse, it's duly recorded, and your wishes would be fulfilled. Okay. This, this gives me a lot to think about, a lot. A lot of things that are going over in my mind and my heart, but this definitely now, since it is a legal act, gives me something that I can really think about and how I should accomplish what is provided in the act. Well, I, I pray that you will find uh, solitude in, in, in this and that uh, the dear Lord will direct you as to what to do and when to do it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Excellent. Come in. Robert Carter III was the son of Robert Carter II of Nominee Hall in Westmoreland County, Virginia, and grandson of Robert King Carter in Lancaster County, Virginia. With generational wealth and wise business practices, by 1791, Robert Carter III of Nominee Hall owned an estimated 65,000 acres of property and more than 450 enslaved people, making him one of the largest landowners and enslavers in Virginia. By conscience and religious morals, along with economic difficulties caused by a depression in the tobacco industry that lasted throughout the revolution, and with other financial burdens, Robert Carter III signed the final draft of his deed of gift on August 1, 1791. The names of 452 slaves enslaved by Carter were recorded on an attachment to the deed of gift. The deed included instructions for a gradual manumission of his enslaved people, and those over 45 years of age were to receive their freedom first. I, Robert Carter of Nemina Hall in the county of Westmoreland in the Commonwealth of Virginia, I'm possessed as of my absolute property of, in, and to my Negroes and Malto slaves, and whereas I have for some time past been convinced that is to retain them in slavery in the contrary to the true principles of religion and justice, 
and therefore it is my duty to manumit them if it could be accomplished without infringement of the laws of my country and without being of a disturbance to my neighbors and the community at large and where is the General Assembly of the Commonwealth of Virginia did in the year 1782 enact a law entitled an act to, uh, to authorize the manumission of slaves. Now be it remembered that I, the said Robert Carter, do under the said act for myself, my heirs, my ancestors, and my administrators emancipate from slavery all of such my slaves enumerated in the attached schedule August the 1st, 1791. At the age of 64, Robert Carter III of Namanai Hall recorded the great deed of gift on September 5, 1791 in the Northumberland, Virginia District Court, a superior court that served Westmoreland and adjacent counties. Carter's daybook does not mention his intent or plans. The September 5, 1791 entry makes no mention of his filing his deed of gift which eventually freed over 500 of his enslaved people and their descendants to the ranks of Virginia's free population in accordance with the 1782 Act authorizing the manumission of slaves. Although research proves that lesser gentry were manumitting their slaves on a smaller scale, Carter's manumission is the largest known release from enslaved status to have taken place in the United States prior to 1862. As the legal process for manumitting, the first class of people from Namanai Hall dragged on into February 1792. Several of the candidates were given permission to bargain for themselves during the present year, essentially taking up their lives as free people before the final paperwork was completed. Carter warned the estate managers that the people should be entered with two names, each of which additional names will be noted in the instrument of emancipation, which is to be recorded in Westmoreland County Court. Advise them accordingly. By January 2, 1792, when the first group of enslaved people were to be legally manumitted, Carter owned 16 named farms and plantations in five Virginia counties, and the Nominee Hall slave community had been in existence for at least 70 years. Thomas, I'm excited about today to have you come and visit me. Uh, I, I really want to know what has happened uh, to some of the uh, slaves at our manumission a couple of years ago. Well, good morning, Counselor. Um, I'm pleased to be here. Thank you for inviting me into your house, and also thank you for educating me. Um, because of you, I learned to read and write from Philip Vicker Spithian, who was the tutor to your children, and I'm now in the position to be able to uh, read and tell you about those people that you manumitted oh, a few years ago. Good. Good. Um, and so I've got a list here that I put together, um, put pen to paper, and I'll just go through some of the names and we can reminisce about some of these individuals. Please do. Sure. There's uh, Barbara Newman, um, born in 1774. She was the daughter of Joan Gumby and she was the mother of James and resided at Old Ordinary in Westmoreland County. And um, she was given leave to bargain for her time in February 1, 1792. Yes, I remember her very well. She was a very, very hard-working lady. Hard-working and good with the children. Yeah, that's right, Counselor. Very proud. She was. Yes, and let's see, the next person we have is Polly Wells. Sure, you remember her well as as, also, as well. 
Um, she was the daughter of Solomon Dixon, and she resided at Taurus, um, which was also in Westmoreland County. Um, and she was also given leave to bargain for her time, which was very important prior to the manumission for them to be able to find work for themselves. Yes, Polly. Hard, another hard-working lady. Hard-working lady. Yes. And then there's Judith Brutus. Um, she was often referred to as Little Judith. Um, she was the daughter of Sarah Brutus and Sam Brutus, and she was the mother of Lucy and Sam Jones. Um, she formerly lived at Scorpio, which is in Frederick County, a little bit north of here, and um, she also received her manumission on May 29, 1792. And what is she doing in that? Well, she is um, technically a spinster. She's a, a homemaker in her household, and her husband is an oysterman, you know, Ooh. as a lot of people down here on the water are. Continued in the hard work, very pride. That's right, Counselor. Um, next we have Abby Gumby, and she was born in 1773. She formerly lived in, on Gemini um, Plantation, also in Westmoreland County, um, and she received her manumission on May 29, 1792, and she was actually there in attendance. I can see her face now. Uh, she was there, along with some others, and I can just see the expression of the smiles. Yes. Oh, it did my heart so good to see those people smiling, like, especially with her. Yes. She was uh, a, a, a very nice and very, very, very wonderful person. Right. I'm glad to see that she's doing well. Yes. And you wanted to make sure as many of those that you manumitted were able to actually be there in attendance. Yes. And so I know she appreciated it yes, very much. Yes, what a great day for them. Yes, it was. Um, and then we've got Sarah Timothy Tosspot. Very interesting name. She was born in 1772, the daughter of William Dixon and the mother of Patty. She was formerly from Gemini Plantation and also resided at Capricorn, which is up in Frederick County. Um, and she actually received um, her manumission on April 24, 1792, also in the springtime. Yes. Could you still cook those term greens yes. that she used to be able to? I drop by her place every now and then and they have them ready for me. Oh, if I just had a bowl of it with a nice big chunk of that old ham meat into it. Yes. Oh, goodness, I would relish that thought of just being able to enjoy that yes, again. She so smokes the ham hocks and puts it right amongst the greens, so it's delicious. And let's see now, Council, we also have Charlotte Newman. She was also referred to as Charlotte. Um, born in 1773, the daughter of Rachel, and um, she was the mother of Louisa. Um, she went from Taurus to Capricorn before her manumission, also in May 29, 1792. Hmm. I remember her too. I think she was extremely a good seamstress. That's right. And she in fact, really she's do. still doing that. In fact, I had her brought up to do some work for me. In fact, Possibly she did some of the sewing on my coat at that Yeah, she could do very fine work, she very could. fine needlework, very, very skilled that way. Mm. Um, and then there's Dinah Richards and Aggie Robinson. Um, uh, they were daughters of Pat Gaskins, um, and also um, they lived with Lydda and Pat um, Gaskins. That's a very uh, popular name that um, some of the, your former um, enslaved population took on because of course you wanted them all to have last names and I know that's been very important for them in order to keep track of their um, yes. holdings because a lot of them old pro own property now and to yes. pass it down to future generations. Yes, and sing. Oh, I can remember some of the uh, hymns that that girl could uh, mm. sing a part into, uh, an alto voice. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. I can, I can hear in the distance singing that. Yes, and we still meet under the arbor for Sunday services, and her voice is, you know, as beautiful as the birds. As yes, and that is one of the things that I really enjoy because I, I love to play the instruments that, you know, in, in, in my home, and my children, of course, of course with, with Philip uh, Fithian, uh, they enjoyed music, and of course, they... Uh, uh, people in, in the, the courtyard sometimes would join in, and her voice was one that I can still plainly hear. Exactly. You can pick it right out. Um, then there is Primus Johnson and Jeremiah Johnson. Um, 
both brothers, um, and they lived in Forest Plantation in Westmoreland County. Um, Primus was one of three men um, who um, reportedly um, was instrumental in saving um, Mary Johnson from an attack, and he was lauded for that. Um, he was authorized to bargain for his own time as well, um, and he was manumitted a little bit later in the summertime in August 4, 1792, and Jeremiah was also um, manumitted at the same time, same place. Strong young men. Yes. I can see those guys right now with uh, the muscles that, uh, hmm. in the, the biceps and the arms that they had. I often wish that my physique was as good <laughs> as those boys were. Uh, I admire them for that. Yes. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, I'll let them know. Um, Samson Robinson, he was the son of Molly, born in 1770, and the husband of Rose Harris, um, father of Elijah, Anna, and also Winnie, resided at Bull Run in 1774. Your properties um, were widespread. Yes, sir. You know, so, yes. you know, I think um, your grandfather was the largest landholder yes. in Virginia, if yes. I'm correct at that. Um, and he was manumitted in May 29, uh, 1792. Uh -huh. um, and he was present there, okay. just like Aggie we spoke about earlier. Okay. So he was able to make it. All right, what is he doing now? Um, he is a waterman, so he, okay. he operates ferries that go okay. across from one part of the Northern Neck to another part of the Northern Neck. So, right. you know, it's a very pleasant job at times, but it also could be hairy, yeah. you know, if the winds, you know, pick sure, up. it takes talent. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Got to keep the, the, um, the boat ship shape, yeah. you know, so he's also skilled in caulking skills. Right. And some of his relatives have actually gone up to Baltimore to be caulkers. Okay. Some of the ships, shipyards up there. I attempted that one time to guide one of my ferries. Needless I say, I attempted. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Counselor. Um, Anthony Harris. He was born in 1769. He was the son of Rachel and George. I'm sure you remember them. Yes. He resided at, resided at Bull Run, which is up in Loudoun County. Right. Um, close to Oatlands, too. There's another property up there that you um, um, acquired. And um, he and um, Anthony and Joe Reed um, negotiated with one of your agents for a tenement. So um, what I recall was you wanted to make sure that everyone you man manumitted was able to, um, first of all, have an occupation but right. also to acquire a place to live yes. and maybe first starting out as tenants, right. but as we now see, a lot even own their own land. Yes, and he's, they have done well. He has done very well. Uh, I was going over my books. In fact, yes. that name pops out. I was going over my books just a few months ago, uh, and I see where his crops have really, yes. uh, 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 he has learned how to, to raise some valuable crops, uh, his money is uh, uh, increasing. Uh, so evidently he's doing extremely well in uh, the field of agriculture. Yes, and um, you are a pioneer in agriculture because you didn't deplete your soil like other fellow farmers did in terms of tobacco use. You converted to wheat, you rotated your fields, yes. and they have picked up some of the same... Yeah, and that is important because I remember him now, clearly. He was so interested in what we were doing. He was so interested in the crop rotation. He was interested in fertilization using uh, animal manure. Yes. And he was also very intelligent. In fact, he helped me in selection of some of the seeds that I was going to use in some of my fields. So I'm, very, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. So glad he's doing do very that. well these days. Um, and then, of course, there's George Cooper. He was born in 1752. Um, the husband of Sarah Cooper, um, and he was he resided at Nominee Hall, which is your principal estate. Yes. Um, and also, from where I'm from, and all my people are from Nominee Hall as well. Yes. You know, so I know him very well. Um, um, he built a tobacco house on Metcalf's Track Number Three, if you remember, in 1786, and assisted in repairs to Double Mill in 1786. He was part of a crew working under the joiner William Anderson on Maratico Meeting House 
1788. So he had extensive carpentry skills, which he has, which he has put to good use now. He still works as a carpenter um, for many people in this area and has his own carpenter shop. He was so talented that I had many requests from the other owners of the plantations around in the Northern Neck. Uh, if I had had five of him, uh, I would have been blessed, but I was more blessed by just having him because he <laughs> truly was a craftsman. Yes, and it's great that he has stayed, you know, in this community yes. and his skills, you know, are able to be enjoyed by many different people here. Um, let's see, we also have William Dixon, um, born in 1752, um, husband of Prue Dixon, and the father of Sarah Timothy Tosspot. That's a name that we've heard before. Um, now, our records describe him as a mariner or sailor um, on some of your vessels, yes. which probably plied the waters maybe down to, the, to Norfolk, other places, maybe Port Comfort. Um, um, he served on the sloop Mayflower and Mockadoc um, and the sloop Atwell in 1775 um, before the war. Um, he assisted in transporting um, people back and forth from your uh, Shenandoah tract in 1787. So he was a very experienced mariner and he still um, is involved in that trade. Yeah. In fact, training younger um, individuals to continue on. Oh, I'm proud of that. Uh, he was highly talented. I've been on uh, uh, some of my boats so many times when he was a capable pilot. I always felt at ease when I saw him at the wheel. I knew exactly where he was going. Uh, you know, the Potomac River was full of those oyster shoals, and he <laughs> yes. could go right around those things just yes. like it wasn't nothing. It's great to and I'm glad to hear that he's teaching others. Yes. You know, it's good to have those skills passed on. Yes, it is. Which it's is true. what you tried to emphasize, you know, before the manumission, when yes. you would talk to individuals you had identified, right. you know, for this, this first manumission, that you wanted them to have a trade that could be passed on so that future generations would also be self-sufficient. Oh, he deserves a lot of credit prior to that. That's right. That's right. Um, let's see. We have also Joseph Reed. He was born in 1750. Um, he's the husband of Jenny Reed and the uncle of Polly Reed, and they resided a little bit north of here, also in Bull Run in Loudoun County. Yes. Um, and uh, he resided at Cancer in, in Prince William as well. Um, and he was manumitted April 24, 1792. Good to hear. I don't really recognize him, the name there, but I'm very proud of it to hear. Yes, he, he was on one of your far-flung um, operations yes. a ways from here. Probably yes. the, you know, the individuals at Namanai Hall you saw every day yes. you know, pop up into your mind. But I can tell you, he's doing very well for himself Good. as a farmer Good. up north. Uh, Thomas Walker, it's the name of a bishop that I've heard about as well, but uh, maybe it's just a coincidence. He was born in 1749, um, husband of Catherine Walker, um, very religious man. Um, he was authorized to bargain for his own time. I believe he's preaching now. Mm, that's interesting. You know, I, I myself have really, uh, over the years, have tried to develop my religious, religious beliefs, and uh, I think that is a very important. And it's extremely proud of me to hear that there's a young man that has gone on to be a minister to spread the gospel. Yes, it goes along with the um, woman we spoke about earlier who sings, who lives a, yes. a joyful um, noise to the Lord as we're instructed to in the Bible. Yes. Yes. Um, Thomas Johnson, born 1747, a husband of Jenny Johnson, um, and uh, resided at Namanai Hall. So yes. you know him very oh, well. Yes, very well. Um, he tended to the livestock. So you know, a farmer dealing with animal husbandry, um, well trained. Um, he also was um, rewarded for capturing um, two escaped criminals. You know, so if you had manumitted him, he would have been emancipated by the state of Virginia for sure for yes. the you know the great work that he did. And I know how he was able to capture a couple of criminals because we had old Red Bull 
hmm. uh, that was uh, got to be pretty mean. Hmm. And I never will forget it. He had broken through the fence one day, and he went out there and he wrestled that bull to the ground by hand. Wow. And I was uh, just amazed that a man could be able to handle a 2,000 pound arm saw. No two men couldn't have a chance to get away from it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And he's great for all the different um, people who own livestock yes. because he's sort of a doctor, you know. Yes. If they've got animal distemper or whatever, he can resolve it for them. So, you know, and that's a skill he's also passing down, I understand. Um, let's see, we've got Nathaniel Canardi, also referred to as Nat, um, born in 1746. He was pressed into government service for four days in June 1781. So, as we referred to him, he is a patriot. And you had other patriots who actually served in the service. And, you know, some also consider that a lot of the individuals that you oversaw, because they contributed to the war effort mm -hmm. in terms of supplying food and supplies um, to um, our different soldiers fighting, you yes. know, and to the animals that, that helped, you know, in the effort as well that maybe they all can be considered patriots. But for him, he was actually, Nathaniel Canardi was actually pressed into military service. Mm. So we're very proud of him. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. And because he was a very talented wagoneer. He mm. knew how to handle those horses. That's true. Yes, yes. Um, let's see, we've got um, Sarah Brutus, also known as Sarah Debo, born in 1747. Um, she was the mother of Betty Brutus, Judy Brutus, Sally Brutus, um, and she resided at Coles Point, which is not far from Nominee on the other side of the river. Is it? Yes, exactly, um, near uh, King Copsico uh, Point, I think as well, on the other okay. edge. Um, she, was, um, uh, she went from Coles Point to Shenandoah Tract in April 1787, um, just before um, your certificate of manumission um, giving her freedom on May 29, 1792. Good, good to hear that. I, it seems like I can remember her. She's quite a rascal. Yes. I, I, can, I think I can plainly can remember her of some of the tricks that you'd pull on the other children. Yes. And uh, enjoyed her. Yes, she brought a lot of frivolity to um, our different um, brethren. Um, and the 29th person, which is the um, the last person that you manumitted in the first tranche of manumissions is Mary Harrison, um, sometimes referred to as Polly Harrison. Um, and she's the daughter of Mary, um, and she lived at Nominee Hall. Yes. Um, and um, she was the mother of a great number of children, Presley Henry Harrison, Titus Harrison, George, James, Betty, Polly, and Sally. Um, and I can tell you that all of these children, you know, have grown up into be great adults and they're carrying on the fine Harrison tradition um, of being both farmers and watermen. Ah, I remember her as a great discipline. Yes. If those children stepped one inch out of line, she was right on them. I'm telling you what, yes. that, that lady had that family and the course system paid off because all of those children have turned out to be fine people. Yes, yes, they have. And um, I just want to say personally that um, I appreciate that I have learned to read and write and I have actually taught my children um, that great skill, which is holding them instead because, you know, as farmers, we need to keep track of all our, oh, look who we have here. Oh, a little visitor. Yeah, that's yes. my little dog. Oh, yes, delightful. Yes, so, you know, we're able to care for ourselves uh -huh. and to be gainfully employed and to be of service and live in harmony here in the northern neck of Virginia. So we want to say thank you on behalf of all of us well, for Thomas, the great manumission. I'm extremely proud of you. And I can't wait for you to come back uh, someday and tell me more of what the, uh, the folks have turned out to be. Yes, I will enjoy doing that. And thank you, Thomas. And you have a good day. Yes, thank you, Counselor. You're welcome.